G'day, welcome back. I especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content on my channel. Uh, if you missed the last video uh, about my dilemma and what I'm going to do about it, there's a link up there now. Perhaps you should go watch that first before you watch this one. Um, I can imagine from a couple of the comments that I received, there are people at the moment going, Yeah, he's back! Well, no, no, I'm not. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video and maybe the next one or two after that is document how I get myself out of this or how do I re reduce the noise that emanates from this place. And what I'm going to start on in this video is the lathe. Uh, I'm pretty sure it makes more noise now when it's not cutting, it's just running than it did when I first built it. Uh, the motor was second hand, I didn't replace the bearings in it, so that's what I'm going to do in this is replace the bearings. But before I do all that, I'm going to set up a decibel meter, turn the lathe on to 1000 revs, 1200 revs, something like that. Just leave it run, not cutting anything, just running. And take some readings meter from it, out of the doorway into uh, well, the main opening into this workshop where all the noise is escaping from, and out at the front gate. So that once I replace the bearings, I can tell whether I've made any significant difference to the amount of noise coming out of here. So, follow me out of the lathe and we'll get started. This camera is the best part of a metre from the machine and I'm not going to turn the sound down so you can hear yourself what it sounds like. So we'll get on with stripping it down and uh, change the bearings. Alrighty, so what I intended to do first up was to take this belt off, which takes the spindle out of the mix and see what the noise level was. But I was, while I was taking this cover off, I suddenly thought, well, does this cover mask noise or does it increase noise because it acts like a drum? So let's find out. I'm going to take uh, a reading with this running without that cover on, with the spindle running. I think it is noisy, not by much, but it is. So next step, we'll get this belt off here. It's uh, two days, two weeks and two days since I did anything out here, and I don't know where anything is at the moment. But I just stopped immediately, didn't do another damn thing other than make a small bit of video. I've done nothing. Turn this off first. Get this belt off. See how much noise it makes without that belt on there. I think I can safely say that uh, the spindle makes little to no noise. So let's get this other belt off here. See how we go with that. I just remember something. I need to machine a little bush up for a pulley before I do all this. I'll put these belts back on again. And there's the answer right there. It's all down in the motor. Because these are, you know, they, don't, they feel great, these bearings, even though they're Chinese things. But they seem good, so uh, I'm going to have to put these belts back on and very quietly try and machine up a little bush for a pulley because I want to replace the pulley that's down on the motor. Alrighty, so I got this thing out and uh, had an old dull moment when I was doing it because I was having trouble seeing the back end of where the wiring is and I was trying to get it into a position where I could see it better and, all, and it just dropped and pull all the wires off so now I'm going to have to uh, figure out where it all goes again. That's just, that's a problem for another day. Anyway, I'll get this pulley off here, which I've had nothing but trouble with ever since 
I first fitted this thing up because the guys I've got this motor from never bothered to take that multi-V pulley off there and just put a pulley over the top of it and it's, uh, it was forever coming loose and making horrible noises and all that sort of stuff. Thank you wife. Oh, I forgot where I was, the wife wouldn't start, but we got to start the bike. But anyway, yeah, they just uh, fitted this over the top. Anyway, so uh, I'll get this thing off here. And then we'll... Oh, God. This pull is actually a little bit too small for this. I could do with a bigger one. But don't have a bigger one, so I have to use this one. Bought myself a new phone last week, and uh, it actually makes pretty good videos, and it's what's videoing this at the moment. That's that. Now we're going to get this thing off. And they, generally speaking, take some getting off. So I think I'll get the torch out, the gas torch out, and heat this up a bit and see if I can pull it off. Last time I removed one of these, I had to hit it with a grinder, put a big cut through it to get it off. I might have to do that on here yet too, but we'll see. Oh, you dirty bastard. Use the clamp again. Now, this is going to come off. I think we might be in luck. Oh, maybe not. No, he doesn't want to come off. So I think I'm going to have to cut that off with the angle grinder and I'm a bit loath to use it because it makes so much noise. But anyway, I'll, uh, I think I'll leave that till tomorrow. The way I see it, I'm still on probation. Alrighty, so uh, I decided after a nice coffee break that, uh, that what, what's the difference between making five minutes of noise today and five minutes of noise tomorrow? Well, not a lot, I don't think. So I cut it a little bit in places where I could. It was hard to get at. And, uh, and then I heated it up red hot again and left it sit for a little while. It started to budge and then locked up again, so I hit it with a bit of, bit of this stuff and uh, let it sit again for a while. And now it's starting to move again, so uh, we'll get this thing off. I've ordered another puller, which could take a couple of days to get here because I had a hell of a time pulling the bearings off the last time I did one of these with this little puller. So I've ordered a longer one, a bigger one. And when that gets here, we'll uh, get the bearings off this thing. Right, uh, that's that damn thing off there. Now, I said before I need to make up a little uh, sleeve, and I did that. But it turns out I didn't need to because I was thinking these shafts were 10 mil, but they're not the 12 mil, which is what this thing is. So I didn't need to do that, but anyway, I did it before. So now we need to get this thing apart. Jesus, I tell you, this thing's been a bit hot at some stage. These, uh, this plastic housing here is actually melted. Well, this one's not, but that one is. So uh, anyway, I'll try and get that undone off there. Might have to cut a bit of that plastic away to get at it. It's probably hard as hot as hell too. And it is. Hmm. And the bolts that hold it all together are seven millimeters. What a mongrel size. Alrighty. That's pretty horrible that bearing. That is pretty damn horrible. Not nice at all. Oh, Jesus. And that one's even worse. Alrighty, so, uh, and I might better get this one off. i get the bearings in the meantime while I'm waiting. Does that come off? 
You don't want to break it because that's the taco part of it. I wonder if the bearing will... No, oh, shit, I can't. Wait. It's commutator could do some cleaning up as well. Alright, I'm going to try and get this off somehow. I don't know how. A twist on there, what's going on? A screw on. Oh, it does too. Look at that. Everything screws on. <coughs> now, can't get that off without destroying that thread. Well, probably not. So I'd better find out what thread that is and put something in there. God knows. I don't know what it is. It's not six mil. It's not eight mil. I want something to put in there so I don't damage that thread. Alrighty, so I decided uh, my best bet was just put a washer on the end of it. And, uh, oh, yeah, she's coming off. Trouble is, this washer's big in the shaft, I'll throw another one in it. It's a bit smaller than the shaft. At least I know that's doing the job. Oh, look at that. It's one of the little screws I use to hold the, uh, the timber panels on the back of the lathe. Sits in there quite nicely and it's about the same size as that shaft. Alrighty, one bearing down and one to go. But like I said, I, uh, I'll have to wait till the bigger puller gets here because this little one won't reach down there. I had a hell of a time uh, getting the bearing that bearing off the last one of these. I'll put new bearings in. Get this little puller. I actually bought it to do the job when it got here. I thought, oh my god, it's too small. But that's that's rubbish. That is it's just knackered, absolutely knackered. And that's not much better. Alright, till uh, till the thing gets here, that's it. in bed last night thinking how can I spin this thing up to clean up the commutator there's all sorts of stuff going through my head I've jury rigged some sort of motor onto the lathe do it in there and turn it down which is what I'd like to do and then I thought why not spin it up in the drill press hey presto and just used a bit of uh, soot sprite perfect alrighty so that pull will be here today but I just thought I'd put a little aside in here in the renovation and extension video one of the viewers asked me how noisy is that roof that iron roof going to be in the rain well <laughs> it rained here yesterday for the first time in a couple of months and it poured I mean it really chucked it down and I was in town in a meeting and the bar we were at had a little outdoor area with this stuff on the roof and oh my god you could not hear yourself think it was so loud so uh I was just thinking the other day, as much as I hate the rainy season, it may actually be a bit of a blessing when it comes to not making noise, uh, or not appearing to be noisy, because the rain might help the muffler out a bit. But anyway, so I just thought I'd, I'd add that in there, but that, yep, that's going to be noisy damn stuff when it's raining. Alrighty, it's taken all damn day. It's just about four o'clock and this puller's just arrived. The damn thing arrived in pieces. It's unbelievable. But then, yeah, only pays six or seven dollars for it, so I suppose I can't uh, expect too much. Anyway, I, uh, while you weren't looking yesterday, I cleaned all this up, this and the housing, cleaned everything up thoroughly with some uh, electrical contact cleaner. So all that's left now to do is uh, get this damn bearing off here, and I didn't mention it before, but these are NSK bearings, which I think is a Japanese brand, but they're made in Poland. And I've got Koyos, which are high quality Japanese brand. Get this damn thing off here, is that going to fit? Yep. I yeah, couldn't believe it. I opened the packet up, this thing just fell out in pieces on the bench. Like a jelly jigsaw puzzle. Oh, there it goes, click. Almost so much easier when you've got the right tools for the job. Alright, that's that one. Horrible. Anyway, now, talking about right tools for the job. I actually, I don't have a press or anything to press that on with, and this one yesterday afternoon, I uh, just knocked it on with a socket. 
And I, I just want to note something. I've seen quite a few guys in recent times fitting bearings to shafts and bashing the hell out of it with a hammer, hitting the outer races and things. Never do that. That's just, just stupid. You might as well not replace it. Let's do that to it. If the bearing's going on a shaft, you should only ever hit the inner race. Never, ever hit the outer race. And if it's going into a housing, if the fitted like here has to be fitted into that housing and the shaft fits cleanly through it, then you hit the outer race and never hit the inner race. I just thought I'd say that after seeing the stupid things I see on the internet. Now I thought I'd better get that off there so I don't damage it. And I probably should have done this already while I was waiting. I should have found something that'll fit over there. Uh, I don't think I have a deep or a socket that'll do that. Which is what I'd normally use back home in Oz because I had a toolbox that big that took two blokes to lift the thing. It had so many tools in it. These things only shielded bearings, the original ones, but I've got... Oh, what's that? That's the wrong bearing. Oh, damn you. It's got two different bearings on it. I assumed they were both the same and I just bought two the same. Shit. Oh, well, well I won't be fitting that up today. I'll have to uh, wait till Monday. Now Saturday today. I'll have to wait till Monday to go and uh, buy another bloody bearing. What's this one? That's a 6201, that one. They're normally both the same bearings, both ends, but this is a, it's this one. This one's a 6202 NSK, again, NSK made in Poland. So I'm kind of wondering where this motor was made now. Well, and what I think of it, I found out what size these little bolts are holding the, uh, oh, don't, oh, holding the brushes on. They're, um, they're 5.5 millimetres, how ridiculous. But anyway, so all sorts of mongrel sizes. But, uh, looks like I'm going to wait till Monday now, to come and get another berry. So, until then. Well, I don't know what the hell happened there. I uh, thought I videotaped all of that reassembly of that motor, but it's just not there. I don't know what happened to it. To fit that other bearing, I took a pump that went down there this morning, they were open, so uh, and today is no noise Sunday. They were open, so I bought that bearing, and to fit that, I just sat the original bearing I'd pulled off on top of it, and then a half inch wash on top of that, and then used the deep ball socket to knock it on and it went on pretty easily. But anyway, so I've got this all fitted back up in here and I've already run it and taken some readings, so I'll have to do it again. And running it the, uh, within one or two RPM of what it was running when I did the first checks, well, I shall fire this up and give you a listen to it. It's not much quieter, really, uh, by the decibel many, because these motors are a little bit whiny. I'll fire it up and give you a listen to it. Now I did take a reading, I took a reading from the bench a metre from this and I took a reading out of the gate. And from memory, I haven't checked them yet, but from memory the gate is considerably quieter. I did try putting a, just sitting a piece of, of uh, this core foot plastic across there and it quiets it down another one or two decibels maybe, but no real appreciable difference. I do have uh, the rear cover off a washing machine sitting right around on my bench with some lube slots in it. I might actually dig that out, cut that up and put that on there. But uh, I think it's about the same. But anyway, but if you, so you've, if you've enjoyed this video, how about giving it a great big thumbs up? It helps to spread the love around. And this brings to an end part one of trying to quiet this workshop down. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in a couple of weeks because I'm off to Chiang Mai next week. Well, actually, while you're watching this, I'll be in Chiang Mai torturing self, myself on some hills if you watch it on Friday when, I, when it goes live. And I will do another one a week or so after I get back for part two. I haven't worked out what I'm going to do with that yet, but I'll do it. So hang in there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.